the bike does that by itself. Why? Because the bike loves you and physics works at five miles per hour and at 105 miles per hour. If you are a new rider that just got your license yesterday or you've been riding for 30 years, you no doubt have heard the term counter steering, probably introduced to you first in your beginner level course, that in order to turn the motorcycle, you have to counter steer. And that means you have to push forward in the direction you wanna go. And it works because if you push right, the bike destabilizes and falls or leans to the right, and therefore you are going to the right. Counter steering. Um, and that's pretty much agreed on around most people. However, there is a disagreement between at what speed counter steering works or doesn't work, or when is it effective, when is it not effective. Normal steering, direct steering versus counter steering, and speed. And that whole jumble of crap put together pretty much. So this video I'll be not only explaining and demonstrating that you can counter steer at any speed including very low speeds um, by the end of the video you will understand and be able to replicate this experiment yourself I'll be doing this by just talking my way through and uh, showing you guys what's going on um, there's no evaluation at the end of this video um, no quizzes or anything like that but it will be um, shown in your daily practice whether you stay on the road or you lack understanding and ability to counter steer and you go flying off a cliff so that will be the ultimate uh, test whether you can stay on the road and put your bike exactly where you want it when you want it so first I'm gonna take off in first gear I'm in a big old trusty parking lot here this is a community park and I'll just be going around this parking lot in first gear uh, pretty much everything under 15 miles per hour and I do that specifically because people say 15 miles per hour is the speed barrier where you cross over into counter steering versus direct steering. It's all 100% BS. You can counter steer at any speed and you do counter steer at any speed. The confusion really only comes down to your lack of understanding about what you're doing. And to be able to do an experiment where you eliminate all other variables but one motion and you feel the direct result of that one motion. So that being said, let's get into it. So I'm just going to take off, going around, right? So you can see my speed, everything in all my videos is obviously miles per hour. I live in San Diego, so it's miles per hour, it's not kilometers. So I'm going 10 miles per hour. So when I push on the right hand of bar, the front tire will momentarily go left, but it's going to cause the bike to go right. Watch, 9 miles per hour. You push and it goes. Let me flip around here real quick. I want to explain something really fast. And honestly, if you just watch and pay attention and listen to that little turn over and over again, I could just stop the video here. But people want more in-depth knowledge. So let's get into a little bit more in-depth. When I push right, the handlebar momentarily went the wrong way. So now the front tire is pointing that way. The rear tire is still driving the bike forward, which caused the front tire to kind of track to the outside. And then it destabilized the bike. And because the tire is rounded, it makes it fall to the direction at which I'm going. So oftentimes you may hear other riders say, I don't counter steer, I just lean. Okay, that proves a lack of understanding of both because in order to get the bike to lean, you have to counter steer. So it's a disconnect. They see the result of leaning, but they do not see the effect of counter steering. That's the missing part. They only see B, they don't see A. They only see one side of the coin, they don't understand that this side of the coin is the direct result of this side of the coin you counter steer which in turn makes the bike lean that being said you push right the front tire momentarily goes the wrong way if you had if my tires were able to spray paint lines this is what you would see here's the front tire here's the rear it would go to the outside first the rear kind of like this and they would track back and then kind of meet up again so the front tire kind of tracks the wrong way and then the rear tire pushes it forward destabilizes the bike and then goes over now this is the thing that's not really talked about often when you push right to go right, if you continue to push forward, 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 and never allow the steering wheel to do this, like you never allow it to turn and actually get the steering axis and the wheel pointed in the direction you're going, you will continue to lean until you crash. That's it. So push right to go right means this. When you push right, the front tire goes the wrong way momentarily, the bike starts to destabilize and fall, and then you have to relax the push in order to let the steering head and the wheel point in the direction you're going. Now, it's confusing because the second part, you don't have to worry about doing it. If you're only literal, and you're like, push right, go right, and you just keep pushing, 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 
you feel the results immediately. So you feel the results like, wow, I'm leaning. And then you instinctively, naturally, unconsciously, you stop pushing because you realize the bike is now going that way. However, out of all the years I was teaching as a motorcycle instructor, there was one student, one out of thousands and thousands for years and years, we were teaching the beginner course. And we said, okay, you want to go left? You push left and you go left. That's it. They're like, okay. And they're just straight little brain thinking. They just kept pushing, 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 pushing. They went all the way down to the ground, started scraping their foot pegs, and the front tire washed out. Just lost traction. Just lean, 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 lean all the way down. So, yes, they did exactly what we said. They pushed left to go left. But the subconscious and um, indirect thing about what most people do when you push left the bike starts to lean you're like wow the bike's leaning i need to stop pushing because automatically no if i keep pushing this bike's going to keep leaning and i can't lean forever traction is not unlimited so you have to stop pushing that happens automatically so most people realize it so now let's take that information with information to be practical out while riding when you push right to go right when do you stop pushing that's a common question i get when you push right to go right, the bike destabilizes and starts to lean or fall to the right. You continue to push in order until you get the desired lean angle for the curve that you're going through. And sometimes that's literally like not even a half of a second. You push right to go right, the bike starts to lean immediately and you may stop pushing almost immediately because the bike only requires this much lean. So you don't have to keep on pushing. Now you're in the corner. He stopped pushing. The handlebars are now turned, so they're not facing the wrong way. They're, this is an exaggeration, of course. It doesn't move this much. But you push right to go right. The bike starts to lean. Hand up. You stop pushing. You're in the middle of the corner with the steady throttle. What do you have to do now? Nothing. The bike is just steady. Steady throttle. Steady lean angle. Nothing's going on. Now, say there's a squirrel up ahead of you. You need to go around it. Well, you would have to counter steer again to either go to the inside or if you pull right, it's the same as pushing left, make the bike stand up to go around it and then push right again to get back down into the corner. So whether you're trying to initiate the lean before the turn while the bike is vertical to get it to lean, or if you are in the lean and try to swerve to go around something in the middle of a lean, you kind of steer during all that stuff. The slower you're going miles per hour wise, the more dramatic the wheel going the wrong way and the, and the dip of that happens. Once you start going faster speeds, the, more, the faster you go, the more stability you have. And then that push can literally be done just one finger. Like uh, on cruise control, going 80 miles per hour, you push one finger and it's just immediately the bike starts to go that way. At slower speeds, you push and you can actually see because you're going so slow, the front tire go the wrong way and that's a big dip. And you can see the handlebars actually move and do this motion. So let me go uh, demonstrate this a couple times. So I'm take a right right here. So just idling six miles per hour. Going straight, I'm gonna push right. See that? I'm not pulling the handlebars. Once I push, the, I lean the bike and then the wheel automatically does that motion. I'm just kind of following it to hang on to the motorcycle. Look, push left, go left. So idling on this bike is a 1250cc engine. Idling goes six to eight miles per hour. Well, I'm going downhill now, so I'm going slightly faster. But no throttle, nothing. I'm just in first gear. So I'm going to make a big U-turn. So how do you do a U-turn at slow speed? Well, you counter steer. So look at no hand, no throttle. Push, bike leans, and I'm going in that direction. You see the front wheel go the wrong way, but then immediately it whips back around the other way. That happens automatically. Here we go. I'm going to go right. Push right. It destabilizes that it falls in this direction. Now, I'm not gonna do it because I don't want to crash, but if I push right and just keep on pushing, I put my blinker on real quick just to let that guy know I was gonna turn. Anyway, if I just keep on pushing and hold it and don't allow that tire to turn back in the right direction, I will just continue to lean and fall. That, that, that's what's gonna happen. You have to ease off the pressure. So now I'll go slightly faster. So 10 miles per hour, still below the 15 mile per hour barrier, which people think is magical, right? So push left. Bike Z blaze, I go to the left. So the engine is running, gyroscopic precision and effect and blah, blah, blah. What if there is, what if the bike isn't running? What if I'm just coasting? Does it work then? Of course, check this out. So 14 miles power, 15 miles power. I pulled in the clutch. No power going to the bike. Look it, I'm gonna push left. Destabilize, go to the left. I'm gonna use the clutch out all the way. There you go, no clutch, no throttle, no nothing. 
Now I'll go over here. I'm going to make a right U-turn at idle. Look it. So I'm going to push right. Watch what happens. Right towards the Tesla. Push. Destabilizes and the wheel goes that way. So this motion of like pushing and then you see my hand go back this way. I am not pulling the handlebar back. The bike does that by itself. Why? Because the bike loves you and physics works at 5 miles per hour and at 105 miles per hour. Alright, so now I'm going to go faster. Now that effect of the whole big movement is going to be less because I'm going faster. But it's the same thing, right? It just happens quicker so you might be able to see it. So I'll, once I get to the white cement, I'm going to go left. I'll push left. So let me go in a straight line. Here we go. Look at Push left, you see it destabilize, the front tire goes the wrong way, then it destabilizes and it falls or leans to the left, therefore I'm going left. So anything, so if I'm going like this, right to go right, I stand it back up, left to go left. So when I'm doing like the weave, like the moto just to weave, so I'm using the clutch now, but still I'm pushing the handlebars and I'm counter steering every single time to do anything. To get the bike to lean, you counter steer. Push left, go left. Right now I'm pushing right to go right, or Instead of just pushing, I may pull. If you pull on the opposite handlebar, it's identical to pushing on the one handlebar. So look at this, I wanna make a left U-turn by not even touching the left handlebar, by pulling on the right. So watch, it affects the same. See that? The front tire destabilized, and then it went the other way. It went that way, the handlebars did turn to the left. I'll do it again, I wanna make a left U-turn U -turn with my right hand on the handlebar. Pull, destabilize, and fall. If I were to keep pulling, again, I would keep on leaning, I would not allow the front tire to turn, and I would crash. You have to allow the physics to do its job. So here we go, and push right, go right. There we go. So I hope this makes everything clearer and more understandable, and the challenge for you is go and do this experiment. Go less than 15 miles per hour, go as slow as you want. It doesn't matter how slow you go, how fast you go. Counter steering works at any speed. To get the bike to lean, you have to counter steer. Here we go. Three miles per hour, I'm gonna go right. Push right, bike's de de destabilized and goes to the right. I had to add a little bit of throttle because I don't want the bike to fall over. Counter steering works at any speed, people. It doesn't matter. It, 15 miles per hour is not a special barrier where all of a sudden counter steering works. That doesn't make any sense. Physics doesn't start to all of a sudden jump in at a magical speed of 15. Um, if that were the case, I should be able to go 14 and feel something different than when I'm going 15. But that's not the case. And how I go right at 6 miles per hour should be different to how I go right at 60 miles per hour, but it's not. Going 6 miles per hour, push right, bike destabilizes, I go to the right. It's just that simple. 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, push right, bike goes to the right. The front tire goes the wrong way, physics, and the bike loves you, the wheel turns and tracks back into the direction you're going. You have to allow that to happen. So you can't just push and hold, you'll keep on leaning forever and you will crash. You push until you get to the desired lean angle, then stop pushing. And that's when the front tire turns and the steering head allows the bike, you allow the bike to turn the wheel into the direction you are going, which needs to happen. Counter steering is just the initial movement to get the bike to lean. That is it. It just gets the bike to lean. You push, the bike to stable, you get the bike to lean. Once you're at your desired lean angle, you stop pushing to allow the handlebar to turn. And then it's just maintaining the throttle. You're in the curve, you do nothing else. Until you're, now you're coming up and out of the corner, you could do two things. You could accelerate to have the bike come up and out of the corner, or you could push on the opposite handlebar to physically stand the bike up out of the corner. And most of the time, you do a combination of the both. You accelerate as you're pushing the outside grip or pulling on the inside grip, same thing, to get the bike coming up out of the corner. But unless you remove all of our variables and do a specific experiment like this, it's not going to make much sense and you'll always be confused. You'll believe people's comments, random articles online, people that have less knowledge experience making a video talking about counter steering and it only works at this speed or that speed. You're not going to know what to believe unless you go and practice and experiment yourself. And hopefully with this video, the explanation I gave and the demonstration I just showed you, hopefully it will be clear as possible for the rest of your riding career that counter steering works at any speed in order to get the bike to lean at all you counter steer and that's just a fact 
Um, even if a lot of people believe it's not true, truth is not a democracy, and it doesn't matter what a lot of people believe. What works and what doesn't work is the only thing that really matters, right? Thanks for watching. Uh, check out the description for all my links to my app, my books, Patreon, and all the gear that I'm wearing, the gloves that I'm wearing. That's all in the link below. If you want to support the channel on Patreon, PayPal, buying a book, picking up a t-shirt, I would appreciate it. And um, see you next time.